It is solo leveling day and Mr. Annie News got us a new solo leveling cut content. Not for today's episode, but last week's. Let's get on it. Sung vs. Kang was definitely a nice bit of action most would call the highlight of the episode. Round winning kill, you see that? Episode, but there was actually something crazier which should have come after. I was personally curious to see whether the anime would include it or not, but unfortunately like it looks like they decided not to. Whether it be because the scene was too dark, or simply due to not enough time in the episode, the scene in question was one which emphasized the part of Sung that died that day. You mean like how he's gonna become more brutal and savage and he has like no emotional connection? Not, not emotional connection, but he's just like feels free to just kill and feel numb to it? Like there was something even more that episode that should have been shown? It was a ruthless moment that I think paints a better picture of who Sung is becoming right now. So, as I talk about that and the extra details from the fight, I hope you'll enjoy hearing what was left out from this amazing episode. And if you did, consider leaving a like or even subscribing. Y'all know what to do. Now, I know some of you probably missed it from last video, but allow me to introduce you once again to Mugen, a new brand myself and a few So last Annie News video, you know, he had like the, the chats off. Okay, good call, good call. Here it is. Chats back. Uh, the last uh, video, you know, Mr. Andy News had like an intro scene where it's like uh, they tease something and I'm like, whoa, what, what, what is this? <laughs> I thought it was like a new anime or something, <laughs> but okay, it's, it's their merch. It's their merch. Go, go fucking go buy their merch, okay? Two others have been tirelessly working on and yeah. what he does is create higher quality Mugen. and inspired fashion. Cool. Clothing that's catered specifically. All right, Ray Shuttle, you know what to do. Go buy his fucking something. merch. Go buy his merch. Brand buy his merch. Instagram. Buy it. I'll also $75 hoodie, three shirt, 90, ooh, $30 per shirt, $35, <sighs> single t-shirts, $35, but the deal is $30, so it's like a $5 discount, huh? We'll be giving away a shirt. All right, all right, go follow them on Instagram. It was even before Sung leveled that he could handle these goblins, but the way he did here with both ease and fluidity was a clear difference between his old self and what he was now. He had tried to hide said difference by minimizing his power, but even that wasn't enough for the others to not take notice of him. I don't think Juhi caught on the entire thing, but Mr. Song, like 100% was like, oh yeah, he's different. But it's like, even if he's different, I'm not gonna rat, right? Mr. Song was like not being a snitch. He even saved us at the very end when it's like, what happened? He's like, oh yeah, I did it with one hand. So what the hell Juhi did inevitably ask how he got so much stronger, the only answer Sung could give was that he'd been I running a lot. He's, he's, Mr. Song knew that it- <laughs> How'd you get so strong? <laughs> I've been doing 10 mile marathons every- uh, 10 mile runs every day. Oh really? That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, sure, had sure. Had to be more than that, but he knew well before this that something was different about Sung. The aura. Sung also wasn't the only person Mr. Song had taken notice of since in the manhwa Juhi was displaying the complete opposite of Sung. Yeah. She was trembling in fear in the face of what were essentially the weakest monsters. <sighs> Juhi, I thought that she's gonna like move forward. Well, this is like the beginning, right? The beginning of the dungeon, so she, it's, it's okay to be scared, but it's like, this girl, I mean, even, even in the episode, she was just on the fucking floor the entire time. Like, you see Juhi, she's probably on her fucking knees on the ground, just like unable to do anything. It fucking sucks that like these characters, the female roles in solo leveling, they're pretty useless, and I'm getting kind of scared because Cha Hei-in has been teased, and she's pretty sick, and she's like an S rank hero. But it's like, is she gonna be like equivalent to Sung Jae or is she gonna get fucking power crept, and is she not gonna do anything and be stuck on the floor too? I don't know. I I, I like a show where the girls are more useful than just being a fucking damsel in dress and distress and like saving the princess, right? It's like, fuck, dude. Can we get a girl that can just like fuck shit up too? A bad look for sure, considering how high ranked she was. It was a clear indication her trauma went deep, and if it continued to be something she couldn't handle, then retirement was unfortunately the only option available to her. Now, a minor setback that came with fighting these weakest monsters was the fact that they didn't even provide experience anymore. Damn. No matter how many Sung fought and how many- Like, like, the experience gain is like insignificant, right? Because he's too high level? ...he killed, he unfortunately wouldn't be able to level up from them. They were simply too weak to provide any value whatsoever. This led Sung to consider leaving. Cut her some slack? She was just about to be killed? No, fuck you. I will never cut them slack. I fucking hate weak characters, especially weak characters that decides to stay fucking weak. That's my entire point. I don't shit on weak characters right off the bat unless they decide to remain weak. 
Look, I tell you guys the entire same thing whenever I shit on Sakura too. There is no shame in being weak. Everybody starts off weak, but then you're supposed to get better. There's supposed to be time invested to have development and get better. And this bitch is not getting better. That's what I'm saying, right? There is no shame in being weak, but to remain weak and not move forward, there is shame in that. Being the association, since if all raids were just going to be more of this, then what point would there be to continue doing them? He no longer needed to rely on the association to take care of his mother, so if the experience was elsewhere and money no longer a problem, We're wasting time here. leaving the association would just give him more freedom to level up the way that he wanted. Yeah. It was a thought he would contemplate as he ventured deeper into the dungeon. Fast forward to after the group said- I guess that whole thought process is like, oh yeah, we, we should go with Jin Ho's guild and do our own thing of solo clearing c rank dungeons, right? Because like, this is fucking waste of our time. But, and it was in the Manwa where we got a bit more insight into the way Kang perceived everything. Huh? He had essentially compared goblins to children and equated the two as equals since to him both were nothing more than pesky insects. Oh, 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 okay, Suguru Ghetto. <laughs> He, he, he thinks that goblins and like human children are pretty much the same. They're fucking useless little babies. They're pretty much just like insects. In fact, humans in general were just a lower subspecies. Humans in general were just a lower subspecies. What are you, Kang Teshik? Aren't you a human too? I guess he's a hunter, so he's like a better human. To him. He would then ask if the criminals were capable of killing children the same way they killed these goblins and. Oh. So the webtoon, the example and the anime that they gave was like, would you be able to kill just a regular human? But Kang Teshik in the, in, in the webtoon was like, would you be able to kill children? To no surprise, all of them. <laughs> of course we can! We kill them for sure. We can kill them. <laughs> the middle one, I, I believe, he's got a deranged fucking look. Just said yes. The thing is, I think the purpose of having Kang agree with them on this was to show he treated human life the same way that these criminals did. Oh my god. They were just as useless to him as the lives of all the monsters. What that goblin mouth do, but wow, the webtoon Kang Teshik is uh, way more ruthless and savage, huh? He's killed. They would then have this cool panel leading into the reveal of how he planned to do the cover-up, and that would lead into the next scene with Kim. What's interesting to note about Kim is that in the novels, yeah. his entire presence was pretty much removed from it. There was no emotional reflection or tragic death, but instead just a brief scene where Sung found his body after killing <laughs> Kang. I think the anime went a little bit into more detail of Mr. Mr. Kim, right? Because like he 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 had the whole moment in uh in episode one, where, episode two actually, where he betrayed you know Sung Jimu in that circle where he ran out, and he said, "I have a family too," and they made a huge deal about that, right? And like. This episode, I think that we saw a lot of regrets from the other characters, other than Mr. Song, you know, for betraying but couldn't make eye contact. And he had this entire thing where he wanted to, like, you know, apologize to, but he couldn't. And, like, um, we had a whole flashback with this family, too. Remember, Papa, are you strong? A lot of death flags. But I guess the anime did flesh out this character more and just kind of show how... I don't know. It, it's a... I don't know if it's a good conclusion for his character. It kind of sucks that he died, but it's, like, it's closure. This is completely different to the Manwa since it was here they really leaned into the more dramatic side of things. Oh? In fact, I had actually found Kim's reflection to be a lot more serious here since you could sense he truly believed Better himself to in the be webtoon? a disgrace for what he did. So in the webtoon, he just like completely accepted that he was a piece of shit for betraying. This was highlighted even more so during his death since in addition to throwing the scene of him and his daughter <laughs> right here in the moment, the way it's read death and flag. the way it scrolls down leads to one of the best artistic reveals in the series so far. Whoa, look at that. Look at that speech bubble. I can't, but it's like red, and like, it looks like the blood is dripping down, right? What I mean is that this scene which was shown as filler in the last episode was used here as build-up to add to Kim. Honey, hmm? Can't you quit being a hunter? This it's again. Tragedy. It's just so dangerous. The economy's in a recession. No other job will put food on the table. <laughs> Way too fucking real, dude. <laughs> The economy fucking sucks. The Canadian dollar fucking sucks. I have to do a 9 to 5 and then a fucking 5 to 10 to fucking, you know, pay bills. The con. <laughs> have you ever considered what it's like to wait for you to come home? I'm scared. They'll bring me back your dead body one of these days. And bitch, go fucking work. Stop wasting time at home. Why don't you get a fucking job, wife? Has come on. It's better than working at some construction site for meager pay. Besides, the association doesn't ask low-ranking hunters like me to go out dangerous raids. Right. The whole thing was like, you know, this should have been like a pretty easy dungeon if Sung Jin was getting called in. Should be pretty safe. That was their whole mantra before. No visuals, so it 
All right, it's just that our oldest child is starting middle school next year, and her second... Oh, I should have never mentioned that second kid. You're done. You're fucking done. Just like Green Poofy Jacket in the beginning. I got, you know, second child coming on its way. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. Uh, don't worry, I know where you're coming from. Stay strong, honey. Okay, I love you. Daddy, hmm? Why are you a hunter? Haha, <laughs> you're asking me all kinds of questions out here. Let me mute Mr. Annie News. I'm gonna go replay this section. I just wanna read the speech bubbles, huh? Okay, okay. I told my friends you're a hunter and they're all like, Whoa, daddy, does that mean you're stronger than the other dads? Of course, I can even beat monstrous beasts. I knew it, you're strong. <laughs> lie that's right daddy's strong only one in thousand are awakened and out of them only a five thousand are d rank or higher oh actually that's kind of ins that's actually significant huh only one in thousand are awakened and out of them only one out of five thousand are d rank or higher that's these statistics they are extremely rare huh many lives rest on the shoulders of a single hunter one out of five thousand although i'm a hunter i know that to my family i'm a husband and father uh oh the speech bubbles the speech bubbles Red, so I can't die today. You did. Or tomorrow. I can't. And the blood drips down. I can't die. Damn. Wow! The speech bubble dripping blood to show Mr. Kim just like hunched over as he's bleeding out. Artistic design wise. That is amazing, man. Okay, let me go back to see what uh, Mr. Andy News had been saying the entire time while I was yapping. News here has built up to add to Kim's tragedy. The conversation has no visuals, so it leaves everything to the imagination. Then, out of nowhere, the speech bubbles start to turn red. This goes down longer and longer. The power than of speech that bubbles, red, which guys. was just a small trail in the beginning, is now a giant pool of blood leading to Kim's body. It's an amazing reveal, which I know they tried to emulate in the anime, but this mm. was something that only the manhwa could do. Yeah, because there is no speech bubbles in the animation, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, the web, the way that the webtoon did it was pretty sick, huh? And the, the fact that it's just like a vertical scroll the entire time, too, huh? Like, the medium of that, you know, content, because it's a vertical scroll, and the way that the blood drips down like that until you eventually scroll down and you see him hunched over with blood draining out, like, that is sick. That's something the anime can't do, huh? Well, the anime, I'm sure, could have done different things. I'm not sure at the top of my head what they could have done, but yeah, that's it's pretty cool that they worked with the vertical scrolling nature of webtoons and, you know, executed like that. I found Kim's apology to be a lot more emotional in the manhwa too, because in addition to Sung seeming truly desperate, Kim's genuine apology was accentuated Damn, by this a art. smile showing he meant Look it. at this art! He couldn't bow his head because he knew he'd die if he did, but despite all that, he was still- He couldn't bow his head because he knew he'd die if he did. Damn. ...able to muster out a smile and demonstrate his remorse anyway. I think it was this, combined with the manwa's more detailed expressions, that made me more emotionally invested when I was reading it. And that's his death, huh? Just all shaded out. Yeah, the webtoon, it's- you know how there's like a meme in the One Punch Man community about how the manga is better animated than the anime? Well, for season two. <laughs> I feel like sometimes the anime just can't compare to really well-drawn manga or webtoon or any other stuff like that, right? I, it's just so hard to replicate the, um, the emotional impact that you'd feel from, let's say, this vertical scrolling nature and seeing all that in the speech bubbles and seeing blood draining out and all the shading and stuff like that, right? The anime is good for like the fight scenes. I think the fight scenes are better animated, like the, the murderous intent, right? The domain expansion. But at a certain point, there are some things that the anime just simply can't emulate the, the, the drawn material, huh? That's not to say the anime didn't do it well either, but I had to give props to the manhwa for making full use of the medium it's on. Yeah, exactly. Full use of the medium it's on. The nature of the vertical scrolling and the speech bubbles to incorporate. That's genius. Switching back to the details from the novel now, though, there was a massive difference in the way Kang had tried to ambush them here. In the manhwa, he had attacked immediately, but in the novel, Kang would make it seem like it was him who had screamed out for help. He was covered he in dead? blood, kneeling on the ground, yelling at Sung and the others to watch out for the criminals. So he was baiting them like this in the mong in the in the webtoon. He's just like, oh no, help! The, the criminals got me! He had essentially made it seem like they jumped okay. him, then collapsed on the ground <laughs> right there to feign an injury. Okay. This Sneaky. of course led Juhi to run straight to him, since while yes. <laughs> no, and she, the Juhi healed Kang up. I, I'm not sure if the healing would have done anything, but. She was definitely traumatized. As someone who took pride as a B rank healer, that responsibility to others triumphed over everything. Okay. Even if there were enemies around and the situation was dangerous, Juhi would always run to heal those who needed it. 
thus the reason she took the risk with Kang. This was exactly what Kang was hoping for though, since Juhi was after all the only person on the same level as him. B tier. You know, it's B class, right? Like, like Juhi, I, as much as I shit on Juhi, it's like, she is B class, man. She, she is. You see, he knew taking out the lower ranks would be easy, so the safest- Fuck, I call it B class. I'm watching too many different fucking shows where it's like, you know, C class, D class, like classroom to elite, or like levels, or tiers, or ranks, or fuck. They're, they're all, it's, it's all getting fucking mushed up in my brain. The best option for him was to get Juhi first with a surprise attack. So, right as she would enter within his range, that's when Kang would jump from Oof. his position and try to grab her throat. He would thrust a magically empowered hand straight towards her, only for it to be stopped right before it could reach its target. Naturally, such a feat was definitely impressive, but as soon as Kang saw it was from an association hunter, his sadistic smile quickly changed to a frown. Hmm. What he thought was about to be some decent competition was nothing more than a hunter who at most could possibly be the C rank. Ah, uh, because association hunters are... You know, they're quote-unquote trash because they couldn't get into a guild and had to kind of just join, like, the... Like, like the association, they're sick. The top, people, the top people at the guild association is sick, but the idea is that people who couldn't get into top-tier guilds then just kind of default join the association as a low-tier, right? Such was the reputation when you worked for the association like this. Kang would then throw a punch to try and get Sung to let go, but that too would be dodged and lead to their first back and forth with each other. An impressive display of trades neither Song nor Juhi could keep track of. For Mr. Song, this wasn't the same E ranker he remembered, since in just the blink of an eye, Sung was now going blow for blow with a B ranker. Whoa! As for Kang, this was an exciting turn of events he was fully intrigued by. He had no idea the association had such high ranking hunters working for it. He did investigate every hunter participating in the raid with him, but none were supposed to be as powerful as Sung was. So, when Sung revealed he was nothing but an E-Ranker, that very revelation was akin to a slap in the face for Kang. Cause like, I'm having this much difficulty against an E-Ranker, but he's not really right, even though he is categorized. What is he now? If he beat Kang Taishik, so if he beat a B-Rank, he's at least a B-Rank, right? Minimum, he's a B-Rank, right? What I mean is that, for someone who'd never lost in speed to any of his fellow B-Ranks, to do so to an E-rank was just unfathomable. That is a blow to he the wasn't mental. at the point where he was losing just yet, but even the idea of- Ain't no way, you said low A. Oh god, we're gonna get the power classing terminology in here, huh? Is he a low B? Medium B? High B? High low B? Uh, high low B? High medium B? High high B? M m maybe low high B. Maybe low high A. Low high A? <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere near A yet? <laughs> Maybe there's a huge gap between B to A. There should be exponential, you know, gap in like the difficulty or the um the amount of power gap between, you know, B and A and A to S, right? There should be like it should be exponential, right? Of an E rank keeping up was just as unbelievable to him. Especially one that worked for the association, since the hunters who did were always the weakest. This would lead to Kang's conclusion of reawakening, and for that he felt he was just unlucky. To him, it was nothing but an unfortunate- But he's so unlucky because, like, it's not even reawakening. This is, like, infinite awakening in terms of Sung Jin Mu's, like, uh, leveling up process, right? So he's even unluckier than he realizes. It's a turn of events he felt he should have charged more money for. This brings us to the flashback with the person who hired him, and the initial offer was actually 2 billion won. A sum more than enough to take care of the criminals, Damn, but not 1. so 5 much mil? to deal with the other hunters, too. So, if Kang was to take care of these criminals, then the hunters with him would have to be taken care of as well. It was a job he had asked for an extra billion to complete. Had he known there was going to be a reawakened hunter joining Ten him, more money. Then, Kang felt he should have asked for more money. 10x that Sung money! Sung was no longer an easy target like all of the other hunters present. That being the case, Kang had actually tried to avoid a direct confrontation with Sung. In both the novels. Oh, you said that if he promised to pretend like you never saw anything, I don't bother you guys anymore. Really? You can never trust people say that say that, right? People are like, oh yeah, I'll let you go free. It's like just don't tell anybody, but that's like you're gonna kill us no matter what if we turn our backs. And the Manwa. He had made it seem really? like he was just trying to kill the criminals and hmm. offered to let them go if they promised not to say anything. 
This was preceded by a few statements which attempted to paint him like... There's no way I could refuse the request of a father whose daughter was oof by the one of those criminals. I tried to turn him down by raising the price, but he was quick to accept it. Honestly, Kang Te Shik's like request, right, to kill the criminals, I think it is kind of justified, right? These criminals are fucking trash. They did, they did terrible things to the daughter. It's just that, you know, other people saw what he did and then it's like, ah, shit, we can't have witnesses anymore. And then that just kind of escalated into one thing to another. The good guy and it was all in hopes it would get them to let their guard down. Of course, this was just so he could take care of them one by one later, so these words were nothing more than empty promises. It was bait, exactly. In obvious never trust them. Sung immediately picked up on since the expression on Kang's face made it evident he was never going to let any of them live. <laughs> Twitch, Twitch, bro, gotta got a better poker face. I'd like to believe that maybe perception or intelligence is, you know, you're able to, you know, deduce conclusions like that and be like hmm i don't know maybe, maybe uh he's lying right now with those tests so, once it became clear a fight was inevitable that's when kang would activate his stealth skill a <gasps> trump card he believed would provide instant hey we stole that stealth skill now right we, we do we have the stealth skill do we have that shit do you, didn't he didn't he use it at the end i forget victory since there was no way sun could react to a target that was invisible what kang failed to realize though was that this decisive attack was exactly what sung had Right, it was a runestone, right, it was a runestone at the end, and runestones can be used to, like, you know, learn skills, right? I've been waiting for. You see, this entire time, Sung was actually hoping to test the trigger for the emergency quest. Oh. He wanted to see what <laughs> conditions would result in its appearance, and in order to do that, he needed- It's just, you know, a killing intent towards you, and then it's like, ooh, the system's like, alright, you gotta kill him, or you're gonna get punished. Kang to strike first. So, by denying Kang's offer, then acting a little panicked, Sung- Damn, these fucking webtoon panels of Sung Jin Woo are so sick, dude. Look at, that, look at this shit. He needed Kang to strike first. So, by denying Kang's offer cold, and acting a little cold, panic, Sung had manipulated Kang into jumping straight into a killing blow. Exactly what he wanted since now he'll get a reward for doing all this. Yes, Kang's stealth was a bit of a surprise for him, but after focusing his senses and concentrating on his surroundings, mm -hmm. Sung could easily detect Kang's presence even with his eyes closed. It was another perk of having raised his perception stat. Before this was it's only quite to a flex. whether he should run from an enemy or not, but now he discovered he could use it for this. It was- It's just like being able to perceive where it's coming from, huh? It, you just kind of know it's intuition. I don't, I don't even need, you know, vision. I can kind of use all my different senses to figure out, oh, you're going to attack from this direction, Actually, okay? Actually, the determining factor in Sung's victory here. Had That's okay. This 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 scene was so sick. The way that he flipped the dagger, he he fucking got a reverse grip at one point. Look look look, look 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 look. It was actually the determining factor in Sung's victory. Bop bop here. bop bop, and then he flips it right here. He flips it right here, had it and then holds that reverse grip. I'm like, oh, ho, 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 ho. he didn't have to do that, but he did. Been leveled up, then Sung knew he would have lost to Kang immediately. In any case. The fight would proceed pretty much as we saw, but once again the novels removed any part making it seem like Sung was losing. He simply used Dash to keep up in speed, then Bloodlust to gain the edge and assure his victory. Bloodlust. Or int uh, murderous intent. Bloodlust is the same thing? I don't know, he just said bloodlust and then he the, the, the murderous intent scene got edited in, so maybe webtoon versus anime terminology? Same shit? Okay, same shit. The anime portrays this effect particularly well, since yeah. the way the novel describes it is- After meeting Jin Mu's eyes, it suddenly felt like he had been submerged in deep water. His body felt heavy, as if he was struggling to move underwater. Straight up just Genjutsu, man, huh? It's as if Kang had been submerged in water. His body felt heavy and he couldn't move the way he wanted Domain to. Domain expansion. Such were the effects of a 50% increase to all his attributes. Oh, he, his body felt heavy because obviously it's minus 50% to every stat, right? So I guess that is the feeling of being stuck. Kang knew his only hope was an all-out attack the next time Sung charged at him, but this too was a move Sung predicted from him. He knew Kang would be panicked and resort to a last-ditch effort and as such threw his body into a deciding blow too. The difference between him and Kang, though, was that because Sung was anticipating this kind of counterattack, he knew to dodge first, then put everything into finishing the fight after, resulting in him just barely missing Kang's dagger, then following. So in the in the anime, we just domain expansion, murderous intent, one shot kill. But in the webtoon, there was a little bit more follow up after that, huh? Get up with that stab to the chest, like how we saw in the anime. Okay, okay. The post fight had much less dialogue since Kang died relatively quickly, but there was something he whispered to Sung right before he did die. What? We don't know what it is until later, but what? it's something that ties to the grim scene coming up shortly.
Uh, maybe it's something like, you're just like me, you're a murderer, you know, you can't go back, some shit like that. Before that though, I just want to talk- didn't, didn't he already say that in the in the anime episode? Didn't he say like, you pretty much just like me, right? And and then I think I made the comment, it's like, no, Sung Jimu, while he does kill, these are pretty much self-defense. He's not going out killing, you know, hunting people down for the sake of killing. He's always just like, it's a fucking safety mission because, you know, the system activated, right? Talk about what it is Sung meant when he said part of him died, and to me, I think it was something like his compassion or pity. Yeah, it's just like, the. I'm not sure if it's empathy, but it's just like, he's just getting more cold as a person, right? He's completely fine with killing, like, maybe before he was questioning, but now it's just like, hey, whatever, I'll just fucking kill now. Since we know the system needs him to be stronger, perhaps part of that is removing any bit of sentiment which it likely sees as a weakness. I mean, he's clear- Bro is literally turning into Ayano Koji. The system is the white room. Just get rid of all these useless emotions. He's clearly not as bothered by killing as he was before, and I'm sure that feeling is gonna be all but gone the stronger he gets. As Sung said it himself, he feels like something's destroyed within him every time he gets stronger. Now, as if to emphasize that very statement, after dismissing the others and proceeding to the boss, Sung would come across one of the prisoners oh? still tied up. His presence was one Sung had detected before he had even- Oh, he was still alive? One of them was still alive? Fought Kang, and it was only confirmed when Kang himself mentioned he had left him there. Wait, he's still alive, right? So bro was just like, oh shit, please, I'm dead. I'm, I'm playing dead right now. Please don't notice. Apparently, he was waiting to kill him in the most painful way possible, but it was before <laughs> he could bet Kim and the others would show up. Okay, this I see. was the final thing Kang whispered before he died, and it was pretty much a message oh. passing on his job to Sung. Kill that guy for me too? In the manhwa, the prisoner's vocal cords had been cut, but in the novel he was capable of talking just fine. Enough that when Sung had asked if he remembered the girl he assaulted, rather than denying it or pretending to not know anything, the criminal would instead just say, which one? I mean, he's being honest, but at the same time, like, bro, <laughs> which one? <laughs> You're 100% gonna- I mean, what, what should he have said? What, 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 what should he have said, right? If he denied it or lied, then it would be a lie, then he would have killed him. He would have said just, yes, I remember, I'm sorry? I don't know. I, it, I don't know. He's being honest, but it's like, fucked, you know? I don't know if it was the panic or the situation he found himself in, but the criminal had zero sense to think about why it was Sung was asking him this. He was instead more focused on getting untied and was still in a panic from the potential of Kang getting him. So, when the criminal turned back to ask if Sung was related to one of the victims, not only was this even more stupid than not denying he did it, but it also confirmed his crime wasn't just limited to one victim. Yeah, multiple. He had just admitted to Sung that he was a monster who used his powers to violate multiple women. This was all Sung needed to hear, so after ganking him again bye bye. and taking him away from the entrance, it was then that the prisoner realized what it was Sung had in store for him. By the time the two were at the boss room entrance, the prisoner who was only just acting all aggressive was now trembling in fear, groveling in his- Did he throw him into the boss lair first? Just fucking tossed him in there and let the boss kill him? Is that what he did to like torture? And piss. Reason <laughs> being that the enemies of the boss room weren't just the- Wait, wait, something about his piss? Wait, wait. At the boss room entrance, the prisoner who was only just acting all aggressive was now trembling in fear, groveling in his own piss. Oh, he peed himself. Being that the enemies of the boss room weren't just these weak goblins anymore. Okay, well, they hob were an goblin? enhanced version of goblins called hobgoblins. Oh. The type that were known for their love of human organs. I did not know hobgoblins love human organs. Okay, good to know. Huh? So, the criminal knew exactly what it was awaiting him in there and... Is did he get Goblin Slayer episode one or or what? Did he did he get his booty cheeks slapped? For Sung, it was a fitting end to a person. So <laughs> he just sad. sat there and he watched him. He watched as the struggling prisoner got <laughs> eaten alive right in front of him. Eventually, his focus shifted Yo, to something Yo, this is so wrong. Are they gonna show that? I I guess they skipped it in the anime, huh? Holy! This would have went so fucking hard. They should have totally animated this! What the fuck? Since behind all the carnage was the boss watching all its minions. Oh my god! It was god. sitting alone on the other side of the room, undefended as the other hobgoblins devoured. I guarantee you, if, if they animated this, people would have fucking loved it and was like, solo leveling just goes beyond, it's so savage, oh my god! You know, people would have fucking loved this shit. Food. Sung used Dash to appear right in front of it, and before the boss could even One know shot. what was happening, it had already lost its head and been defeated. Sung's plan of using the prisoner as bait had worked. 
he was able to take care of the boss without any risk to himself Very whatsoever. efficient. The rest of the hobgoblins were killed just as easily, and by the time all were dead, Sung had leveled up twice. Oh. He was level 27 and on his way to level 30 now. It turns out hobgoblins give way- We still have no job, man! Like, I thought we'd get a fucking job at, like, level 10, like a Maple Story, bro. I mean, level 30 is coming up. Maybe we're gonna get a job at level 30? Like, where, when, when are we gonna get a fucking job, man? Where's the time? What, 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 come on! Where, where, where's our new powers and shit, bro? XP than goblins, since their difference in strength is actually quite noticeable. And, like, this is episode 10? Th this is episode 10, right? Or episode 9? We, we only have, like, a couple episodes left until season 1 is over. Well, core 1, because they're gonna go to core 2. I'm not sure how they're gonna handle it. Are they going to continue with like episode 13 to like 24 or is it going to be season 2? We're on number 9? Like, bro, like, I mean, the most obvious guess on what job he's going to get is just like rogue assassin. Based on what we've seen so far, seems like it's going to be rogue or assassin, right? That, that is a level 1 thinking, but people are like, oh, you're never going to guess, man. You don't even know. And if you spell me, I'm going to fucking ban you. No. It turns out hobgoblins give way more XP than goblins since their difference in strength is actually quite noticeable. In fact, if a low-level squad had spent the entire raid fighting only these weak goblins, then the leap in strength of the boss here might have been fatal to them. Had they gone in expecting more of the same, then that sudden spike in difficulty would have been a nasty surprise for sure. It was yet another indication you could never predict what could happen in the dungeon. The only absolute in the world of hunters was a power strong enough to overcome all this chaos. So, whether it be magic beasts or hunters themselves, Sung knew he needed to continue obtaining power to protect himself, both himself and the people he cared for. Yeah, get a job, now, bro. Sung would wait until the What's last class? before exiting the dungeon because, while it was to make sure every essence core was obtained, he didn't want the association going in to investigate anything. There was a chance that if they did, they could have found out what happened to the other survivor. So, with that leaving only three witnesses, and the we're rest out. was a matter of everyone getting their stories straight. <laughs> Luckily for them, the person who hired Kang had turned himself into the police. He had oh. waited for confirmation that Kang did his job, then confessed to everything immediately after. The client- It's a crime to kill- I mean, it was, an it was a paid hit. It, it was a paid hit, so I guess that is a crime, yeah. was the president of a massive company, so that explains why he was able to afford so much. Yeah, I was wondering, like, how the fuck did he just get, like, a couple mil? Like, where the fuck did you get it from? But, alright, bro, was a fucking CEO. The rest was pretty much as we saw, so that's everything you missed from episode 9. Yo, are we gonna get a Juhi date scene this episode? If you enjoyed hearing all these details, then feel free to leave a like since they hmm. really do help the video. Alright guys, y'all know what to do. Please go go, go to Mr. Annie News' channel. Sub to his channel. Like this video if you did, he always gives such great recap. And as well as a summary on what was cut from the anime. Now, the anime, the webtoon stuff, damn. When I saw Mr. Kim's death in like the, uh, the way that the, you know, the, the speech patterns, right? The way that the speech patterns are done, right? The vertical scrolling, the medium of the webtoon. That shit was sick. Makes you want to fucking read the web too. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. But hey, look forward to the next soul leveling reaction. Don't worry. It'll be out soon, okay?